Hey everybody, my name is Chris Day. I'm the managing broker with Worth Clark Realty here in the Villages. I've got 45 agents that work for me. My goal with my YouTube channel is to get a video to you that is important if you're making a buying decision. I think one of the biggest hot button issues in Florida and the Villages right now is home insurance. You're probably reading about it quite a bit if you're in other states. You're probably being impacted by it if you're in other states because I think it's not just a Florida issue, it's becoming a nationwide issue. But as a top producer in the Villages, I always like to partner with other top producers. And today we have Tim Bascom here who owns the Bascom Allstate Insurance. Uh, and what I wanna do with Tim is uh, get into some of the hot button questions that you're maybe thinking about at home. So first of all, I'll go ahead and introduce Tim. Tim, uh, tell us about yourself, um, your Allstate uh, company, and so forth, and you know, we'll go from there. Cool, sounds good. Well, it's always good to be a part of, uh, uh, just part of the growing people in the industry, um, and that's where we come in. But um, yeah, I'd say for me, I played professional baseball for eight years, retired from that, and then got directly into insurance after that. It's been a it's been great for the family um, and to, to kind of build a family. So that's what we're in the community. We've got three boys here locally um, and we live and just love the community that we're in. But uh, a little bit more about me as we opened our agency in 2016, I bought a franchisee for Allstate. Uh, I've been around for 35 years. So the agency has been here forever um, and we're just growing leaps and bounds. Um, and we're the number one agency back to back years for Allstate in the state of Florida which is great. Uh, and then we opened up our own agency as well as a full brokerage for home insurance too. So we have pretty much every option in Florida A to Z for insurance that we need. So a couple things neat about Tim is I met Tim through one of my agents that works for me named Andrea. And one thing she said to me is, Chris, you've got to talk to Tim because he's the type of guy that if you're in need, uh, he would run a generator out to customers and things. And that means a lot. Um, I need people that I work with that run to problems, not away from problems and that would be Tim. I think another neat thing, and I didn't even know this about Tim when we first met, but I am from Maryland. I'm a huge Baltimore Orioles fan. You can even see this orange color uh, behind me. That's not necessarily for the Orioles, but <laughs> I'm gonna say it is for this video. But uh, he was in the farm system for the Orioles as a pitcher. I'd love to hear a second about that too, because I don't even know about you know yeah. all that. So kind of maybe where you went to school and yeah. your rise to the top of going through yeah. the Orioles. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I was, I'm a Florida boy, born and raised. I uh, grew up in the Tampa area, a little town called Dunedin right there on the coast, which is uh, a beautiful place to grow up. Played at UCF, was in Central Florida in Orlando, um, All-American there, and then got drafted by the Orioles in 07. Um, played from 07 to 14 with them. Um, it was a great time. It was, uh, came all up to AAA, uh, got some time in, in the major leagues in spring training, just never was able to break camp with the team. Um, and it just didn't work out for me to get that 10 year, you know, $40 million contract. But uh, it was great to, to have that experience, uh, stayed healthy the entire time, had a lot of success with it. And then, uh, you know, life just kind of comes and goes and uh, I want to start a family. It's tough to do that living out of a suitcase for seven months a year. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome, man. I, that's, I'm learning something new about you because I, I went to UCF too for undergrad. So, oh, <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm a night man and an nice. Oreo. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> So anyway, we're gonna get into some questions about insurance. So yeah, definitely keep watching because this is important to you at home if, if you're buying in the villages. So Tim, I know a big hot button issue right now has been uh, roofs. And I know that um, insurers look at roofs very differently based on the age of the home. Uh, once you get to certain age thresholds, it limits the number of insurers, but I'd love like an overview of what's sure. happening with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to give everybody the background, if you've been around here, you've seen it, if you haven't, maybe you haven't, you've come in from a state that you've probably maybe also seen that, but there have been a lot of roofing companies, most of them very good, some not so much, kind of roving the areas um, and, and just trying to replace roofs, which some roofs need it, some roofs absolutely do not. I've got video of roofers with baseball cleats walking around on the roof. So baseball background, I could pick out a pair of baseball cleats pretty easily. <laughs> and that's what's been going on in our area. But um, yeah, to summarize things, a lot of roofs got replaced uh, that weren't anticipated to be replaced at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old when they should last 20. And that's kind of what the manufacturers would say is a 20 to 30 year old roof. And when you replace it at 12 years, the insurance company and the actuaries and the cubicles behind the scenes that do all the math, 
you know, they're they're charging a certain rate thinking the roof may have 15, 20 years, not nine or 10. So um, that's kind of led us to where we are, which really, you know, we've got access to 16 or 20 carriers in Florida. Um, right now, things have kind of leveled off. We had a period of about two years that we're just kind of getting out of now where it was, it was tough if a roof was 11, 12 years old on a roof. It was tough to find a carrier to, to write the policy and rates have been going haywire, but eligibility purpose wise, uh, we've kind of leveled off. So really we're, we're at about a 15 year old roof. 16 gets kind of tough. So if you're a realtor or someone looking to buy in the area, if you get to a 16 year old roof, potentially that seller should already kind of know what's been going on and know that they may run, kind of run into these hurdles. We can still get the, the deal done and get insurance in place, but your options do become extremely limited after a 16 year old roof. Awesome. Um, are there any other hot button items in the in the world, maybe like hot water heaters, ACs, anything else that uh, folks that are looking at homes in the villages should be thinking about when they're buying? Yeah, so thinking through that a little bit, um, if you run across, usually ACs are replaced within 20 years, but if you see like a 22, 24 year old uh, AC unit, sometimes those out there, the outside condenser units, those, um, it, by that point, it's probably rusted and been hit by the weed whacker and all kinds of stuff and been replaced. But if not, I would kind of keep an eye on that. Some carriers are okay with it. So we, we see AC units that are super old on older homes in the area and they're, they're okay. So that's not necessarily a eligibility or a huge red flag. Uh, when you see a water heater over 15, think of water heaters and roofs kind of about the same age. A 15 year old water heater is about the limit for most carriers. Again, some will go more, but you're going from, you know, 16 options down to like two or three if you get a, you know, a 16 or 17 or 20 year old water heater. Anything under that, green light, no problem at all. The rate's not affected by anything at all. It's more of a green light, red light versus a rate being higher because the water heater or the roof age is higher. It's, it's either a yes or a no, more so. I gotcha. And then another big thing that has become really prevalent in the last like maybe four or five years is it used to be buyers would just get a regular home inspection. Now I see a lot of times they're getting a wind mitigation inspection and a four point inspection. Many. Um, uh, home inspectors are actually bundling those together for a flat fee because they know insurance is going to need them. Can you touch on maybe both of those sure. and why they're important to get from a buyer's perspective? Absolutely. Um, it, there's a lot of confusion about this too. So just to kind of give you a, I'll give you a couple of age houses and what you would want for those aged houses. But if you have like a, say your home's 20 years old um, and that would put it at like a 04, I wouldn't necessarily get a, a wind mitigation unless it's going to be super cheap to do as part of a bundle. And again, like Chris said, most home inspectors will throw that in there. And it's, if it's 150 bucks for both of them, go ahead and get it. But the building code in 2002 is the last building code that changed for roof age. So if the roof and the home was built 02 and newer, necessarily you don't really need the roof because we can pull a roof permit. If it got replaced in 2020 and it's an 03 house, a uh, wind mitigation is not going to save you any money. Whereas if the home is a 99 with a newer roof, that's going to save you thousands of bucks on insurance. So I guess the building code changed between 99 and 2002. So um, I would say anything older than 2002 build age on a house with a newer roof, get a wind mitigation every time. Um, but other than that, like a 2017 home, a wind mitigation is going to do nothing for you. So I wouldn't bother getting one, even if it's only 75 bucks to get it, just save your money. You don't need it. But again, anything older than O2 with a roof that's newer than O2, I would get that for sure uh, when mitigation that will save you. I mean, it, it's gonna be at least hundreds of dollars per year in perpetuity each time the policy renews, but probably more than that, probably 500,000 bucks off of insurance. Uh, and then a four point, we've seen a lot of companies, what's been going on a lot is there's been water leaks in kitchens and sinks and the little things and odds in that have been causing the claim frequency to go up. So a lot of companies, used to be 30 years old for a four point are now 20 years old and older that would require a four point. Right, but again, it's it's case by case and it's nice to have a, a, a local agent that can broker to a bunch of companies. So if you don't have a four point inspection on the home as a 1998, you don't necessarily need one to get the deal done and to, and to get closed on a home. But um, I'd recommend one just because it's gonna hit the main four points, which are the AC, electrical, plumbing, and roof age. And it's gonna give you a decent uh, overview of what's going on in the house. Very cool. And then as far as, you know, if, if a customer bundles, I mean, is there kind of a set how much they'll save if they do their home and their auto with you? Can you touch on bundling? Sure. Yeah. I hate to be cliche because everybody's seen the commercials on bundling. Uh, and some of the, the big internet call center companies just hit it really hard. The funny thing in Florida is there's not many national carriers. So it's nice to have 
you know, the, the name recognition of Allstate, a Fortune 50 company. But the beauty of Allstate and why I chose Allstate back in the day was that I have a full brokerage as well. So not only can I write Allstate, but I can write 20 other carriers for home insurance in Florida, which allows us to do get creative. Some companies do offer some bundling that we'll write with, but others don't. So it's just to be straightforward with you. Um, we're going to do the best thing we can for the client, whether that's bundling or not. We're going to educate, advise, and kind of give them a customized policy that they're going to want uh, and that they're telling us they want anyhow. So Great. And then it's another topic that comes up quite frequently with homeowners here is insuring the golf cart. You see some where they add a rider to the policy. You see some yep. uh, where it's part of the home insurance, some it's not. Um, I know it's also a bigger topic in rentals because of liability, but I'd love to hear your sure. expertise on uh, golf cart uh, insurability. Yeah, uh, you'd be a man. I mean, we're in the mecca of golf carts. I think there's 100,000 golf carts in the villages um, as we speak right now. So, um, you know, if you're in a small private golf carts community in Pennsylvania or something, you could probably attach it to your home policy and have a problem. If you're driving it to and from Brownwood or Lake Sumter Landing and that's your main mode of transportation, I would highly recommend to get a standalone golf cart policy. They're 150 bucks a year. You don't need to make it street legal and go to the DMV and make it auto insurance. Just get a golf cart policy. You do not want to have a golf cart claim on your home policy because you ran over someone's toe. And we regularly see golf cart claims for liability when someone's injured or a golf cart flips at least once a year where it's, it's into the six figures for the claim. So. You want a golf cart policy, you want an agent that can write you the correct policy because a lot of those call centers don't know what they're doing with it, honestly. <laughs> That's crazy. $100,000 claims for a golf Once cart. A year, oh my least. God. And you can spend $150 to like, that's, a, that's money we'll spend. Um, Tim, I do a lot of reading on the insurance industry and I know that uh, insurance is dramatically rising. I know it's many factors. It's labor costs, building uh, houses, it's construction costs, but I'd love to hear your kind of high level overview about what you're seeing and what sure. you feel, why you feel it's rising dramatically. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've seen, I used to insure homes for 300 bucks a year for a $300,000, like a nice home. And now really, if you get under a thousand bucks a year for insurance, you're doing a very, you've got a great premium. Um, the average price I think is about three to $5,000 a year in Florida. We're right where we are is a sweet spot. We're in the cheapest part of the state for insurance, uh, for home insurance and property casualties. So uh, you get towards the coast and it can be crazy. You can get policies without wind. Um, but where, where we are is, uh, it's, the, it's the, honestly the easiest and the cheapest place to insure homes in Florida. But what's been happening is the, the rise in claim frequency. Companies are leaving the state left and right, not renewing policies by the tens of thousands. So uh, we, we do our best to kind of navigate through that. And luckily we have all the options. I'm not just beholden to one company and just towing the company line, which is nice because if I was, and you know, there are certain companies that are national carriers where they call their agents on a Monday and said, hey, we're dropping 10,000 policies that you have and about 200,000 statewide. So good luck with that. And that hasn't happened to us because we've done some smart moves and you know, made, made insurance bound policy with the right companies basically for our clients. Awesome. So another question that I know viewers at home will want to know is, is there a difference in homeowner's insurance uh, when a homeowner is full-time versus seasonal? And then also, I know I've had some issues where homes are vacant too long and sometimes uh, homeowners are notified sure. about that. So I'd love yeah. if you touched on that, um, the different rates and the, and the vacancy. Yeah, definitely. Um, to get back to one thing you mentioned on the golf carts, Chris, I forgot to mention it. The, uh, when we are a landlord, and you own a golf cart, obviously you can get a little bit more on that monthly rent for the house if you have a golf cart attached. I would highly recommend that you do not attach a monetary value to the golf cart specifically. It's just there like a fridge or a TV. We can write you a golf cart policy that covers you and anything the tenant would do in that golf cart. But make sure you're not putting like a $10 a day golf cart fee on top of your lease or in the contract or anything. And then, you know, Allstate or anybody else will cover it um, properly for liability for anything that renter would do. But it does give you more value as a landlord to rent that house out more if the golf cart's there, uh, clearly. So I deal with that all the time. Oh, yeah. I've, I've owned many rentals and um, I've seen it done 20 different ways in the villages from, <laughs> hey, this is here. You have a separate rental policy for the, mm -hmm. you know, the house and the golf cart. I've right. seen where you've got to take out a policy. So it's it, this is really good information. Yes. Um, but back to the question about, you know, seasonal versus full time mm -hmm. insurance and vacancy. What are you seeing yeah. there? Well, think of it this way. If you're buying a home and it's going to be seasonal, the risk of a claim being a little bit larger is present. 
even if you have a property management company that comes in once a week or twice a week or every two weeks, a leak could build up a little bit more. The drywall could get a little bit more wet and a little more of a piece of the drywall has to get replaced. So the, the, the rates and the premiums are a little bit higher. It's not like the double or triple the price to have a seasonal home or something. It's not gonna be ineffective to buy that house just because of the insurance or something, but the rates are a little bit higher. And that's what we'll ask that question anytime we're doing a fact finder for a client is, you know, if you're here and you're a snowbird, which is very common in the villages, if it's six months here and six months gone, maybe you want to get a property management company, maybe you don't. Either way, we need to know those kinds of facts. And if you're going to come in once a month, that also will help the rate versus being home being not used or not, you know, looked after for six months. Rating's a little bit different by a few hundred bucks or so. I, I definitely, I actually dealt with it yesterday. A lady got a notice in the mail because the home was vacant. It's actually in the state, mm -hmm. which does happen here. And she's, you know, dealing with her mother's estate, sure. but she got a notification. I don't know how the insurance, maybe they got a copy of the death yep. certificate, but the insurance was like three or four times because it was just completely vacant. Not even yep. a person checking on sure. it. So yep. that does happen here. I'd love, it's not a huge issue, but I'd love for you to touch on that too. Sure. Yeah. And it's, it's really getting a local agent that knows how to ask the right questions and the place of policy of the right company. Most companies in Florida, which is different than some other states, they won't, they're won't. they not gonna inspect the home before you insure the home, before you buy the home, obviously, but some will inspect it two weeks after. And if that thing's, you know, if you have a primary home and there's a for rent sign in the window or it's a seasonal home and they take a peek and do an exterior drive by inspection real quick and the window's open, there's no furniture in there. They're gonna ask questions of the agent, which in turn makes us ask questions of the client. And you know, if the intention was we're gonna move in within a month or two, we can set the tone with the carrier, the insurance carrier properly to where it's not gonna be an issue. So that a lot of times it could be just the agent didn't communicate or write the correct policy for the client. But a lot of times it's things just change in life and that probate took longer and it's a nine month vacancy in that house. And we got a bottle we even navigate for the client. Um, and sometimes you gotta write those temporary band-aid policies for the clients. Very cool. So a big competitor because uh, it's the Villages Insurance, and I would just love to know some differentiators between Allstate and the Villages. Um, sure. So tell, tell that to the audience. Yeah, um, I love the Villages Insurance. <laughs> Put my hand up, I, I love the Villages Insurance. They're our number one source of new business. Uh, and you know, it's a it's an impressive, well-oiled machine. They've kind of got everything. You come down for the lifestyle, stay and play, you're insuring the home, tiling the home, buying them, but it's all done in a weekend. And then folks realize after a few months or, hey, I've got my LSA policy up north and you know what, I really want a local agent. I don't wanna sit there for half an hour and not know who I'm gonna get and someone different every time and more of a call center approach. I work the front desk. I'm at the reception office, at my office. I'm not in the putting green, you know, hitting balls back and forth with a coffee on my hand every day, but that's, you know, we get a lot of clients just saying like, look, I want someone local that's going to be giving back to the community. Um, and that's where we come in. But honestly, I've got, I don't have a bad word to say about the villages. Uh, they are a direct competitor of ours and they're our main competition. And they have the main market share for insurance, obviously with seven or eight offices in the villages. Uh, but we've got pretty much every option that they do. Um, and it's when folks find out that they don't have a local agent when they go to the villages and they just get the deal done over that weekend, they're seeking us out. It's been great for us. I can't tell you how important that is to me uh, in selling real estate in the villages. There's been two or three times already this winter where I've texted Tim with uh, problematic situations and uh, he was jotting on the spot getting me uh, and the customer taken care of. And that'll actually lead into uh, the next question because one of the things I texted Tim about was uh, one of my buyers for a home uh, was notified that back in 2019, uh, a seller of that home had called in to their insurance company about a mold claim that was actually, um, nothing was done with it, it was canceled out, but Tim definitely helped me uh, with that situation and the buyer. But that leads in this question, Tim, kind of go into how insurers share information between multiple insurance offices so nothing really is ever missed. Sure, yeah, there's a, there's a database that most carriers I'd venture to say every carrier in Florida um, reports to you for claims. It's called the Clue Database. We run a Clue Report, CLU, um, and actually I don't know the acronym, but it's a database and all insurance carriers report claims to that database for that very reason is, honestly, the buyer wouldn't want to walk into a home if there's an open claim for a water leak in the kitchen without knowing it. You may find out on the inspection, but when we run that report, we're navigating to the right carrier that either isn't going to 
be too worried about it. Or if we've got to address it, we're doing that on the front end versus you find out the closing table that there's a problem. Now the closing's delayed or blown up completely over something that's silly that can be taken care of a month ahead of time because the agent did their jobs properly on the real estate side and on the insurance side. And that's why it works so well together. So. Well, I really appreciate you helping on that. Um, so another important question to those at home, I think those uh, that are in other states, they read some stories about sinkholes. There's been some pretty major ones in the state of Florida, especially sure. in the Tampa area. Um, I really would say I haven't dealt with it too much in my 20 years. I know they're out there and I've read articles about them, but I know from other states, that's a scary thing. So I'd love if you touch on like how those are looked at. Um, I've always even wondered from an insurance standpoint, about like a home because let's say it did have a sinkhole at some point and it has all the concrete sure. drilled yep. underneath of it. It's more structurally sound, but I've even heard Absolutely. it limits the, you know, the policies going forward and, and that home can be impacted. But I'd love if you just give a, you know, a general overview of sinkholes, what you're seeing, sure. you know, if there's separate policies available and so forth. Yeah. And in, in general, basically from, there's a corridor from here down to Tampa where the soil is more of a clay based soil. Below us in Florida, we have the aquifer, which is like a basically a living, breathing, flowing river. Rains a lot, aquifer raises, it gets drier, the aquifer goes down, and we have a, basically a clay soil, limestone sponge below us. So there's air pockets, which once you put a, a house on a piece of farmland that's never had any weight on it, that air pocket will rise to the top, and that's why you see a sinkhole pop up. We've gotten really good, technology has not me specifically, but... Um, engineers, home builders, the village is great at it. They do ground penetrating radar. So they can see when a sinkhole is like 20 feet below the surface and it's gonna be a problem. They'll build a lake on there. So a lot of times you'll see it on a golf course in the area, the lake drains overnight and it, you know, a sinkhole opens up, but it's because they knew that sinkhole was there. But the problem is you, the radar only goes down so far. So sometimes you just can't avoid that and you'll see a home be engulfed by a sinkhole or a bunch of cracks here there. Um, Marion Lake and Sumter County are in the top five every year for sinkhole activity. Um, but in general, builders have gotten really good about avoiding the sinkholes or putting a, a retention pond on it, stuff like that. When it does affect the house though, uh, it does become an extremely difficult problem. Um, when you have the right policy in place, the insurance company will come in and basically make the house look like an ocean pier. All the soil goes away, you still have 80, concrete piers going down to the bedrock that's below it. That could be a hundred feet down, but they're still gonna drill down through your kitchen, around the entire exterior of the house to make that thing secure. At that point, that was the most secure place in the entire area to live in, but the insurance does get extremely hard. So there's out of 16 or 20 carriers, there's probably two that will insure at that point. Pricing is not gonna, you know, I'd buy a single home. I mean, it's gonna be tough to finance and insure, but those things are secure, but from an insurance company standpoint, someone just spent 200 grand to make sure that home isn't gonna go anywhere. It does get super hard to insure at that point. Yeah, I, I, I've definitely seen that, but I always feel like, geez, these are more structurally they secure are. and I'd <laughs> rather have the protections. And I still, the insurance doesn't seem to be that much more, just no. like just carriers limited. So, yeah. but, I, but it definitely has scared uh, people away in the, either on the buyer side of the listings I've had, at certain, you know, for certain things. Sure. I, I always actually, for the ones I've dealt with, I have the engineering reports like right there to hit it and yep. in, the, in the disclosures, even the MLS, so everyone can see what was done and, and hopefully feel comfortable. I know on one of the last ones, the um, buyer went as far as uh, calling the engineering company, you know, to sure. say, hey, what was yep. done? And actually what was crazy is they got the exact guy on the phone that did really? the, wow. was in charge of doing the, the work. So, <laughs> so Tim, uh, last question. And this is gonna deal with condos. Uh, there actually are some condos in the villages. A lot of you at home don't realize that, but the Spanish Springs Townhomes are a condo association. Uh, the Glenview Carriage Homes have a condo association. And as you know with condos, all the exterior, the roofs, the power washing, the, the lawn, everything is taken care of. It's pretty rare that those are on the market in the villages. But I did want to get into a question about insuring condos because I know I read a ton since the condo collapse happened in South Florida, and that's a pretty fluid situation sure. of insuring those. So I'd love if you touch on it, even you know from maybe a villages perspective, but even a coast perspective, because some of the folks here are probably looking at many areas in Florida besides just the villages. Sure, yeah, and especially if you're looking at a condo, you're if you're looking in the area here, my office is near Spanish Springs, so I'm very familiar with those condos that are there and the, and the uh, associations and what they require and what we do for insurance on those. But in general, if you're in central Florida and you're not going to be affected by a hurricane 
why did my bill go up or why is the rate so high here? It, insurance is pooled. So most of the condos in the state are around the coastlines on the east and west coast. And that's where the hurricanes come through. So a lot of condos, when they're damaged, Fort Myers, Sarasota, whatever, it's still going to affect pricing up here and eligibility up here. And folks are actually in our area still getting non-renewed on condo policies because of what happened on the coast, unfortunately. So um, we haven't had a, you know, hopefully this hurricane season isn't too bad, but in general with condo insurance, you just want a local agent that knows how to write the policy. You do not want what's called an HO3 policy. That's for a site built home. That means you own the land, the structure, you got to insure it all. You want what's called an HO6 policy. Uh, you want an agent that'll read through the HOA declarations to know exactly what you want coverage for and what you don't. Because even some of the HOAs are a little bit different on, you know, you might have to cover some of the piping on this HOA where you don't have to do it with, with certain other HOAs. So we really dive in to make sure the client has the right policy for that. And it's, you know, those are relatively cheap compared to a site built home policy. So One other thing I want to touch on, and I said that was the last question, but one more that came from that is, do you see people ever get like the wrong policies? Like it was uh, written and it's like the total, that's, per, I mean, isn't yeah. there a big liability factor from huge. that? From, huge. from the agents or the, the national player? Yeah. Well, that's why we cover our butt is I'd, I'd rather write the right policy, but also I'm definitely scared of writing the wrong policy too, because the client can come after us, the HOA can come after us. We're gonna do the right thing by the client every time, not only because it's the, it serves them properly, but it also covers our butt then on the tail end. <laughs> Man, that's amazing. Um, well. That's going to wrap it up. We've been about 30 minutes with Tim. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post Tim's contact information in the comments um, for his office. If you need uh, insurance or have additional questions from this video, please get in touch with Tim. He is by far the expert. Um, like I said, I've loved working with him locally. Um, I consider him a friend. So definitely uh, get in touch with him. Uh, and again, thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Uh, again, my goal is to provide you good, valuable content that you can really use, not walking through a floor plan and showing you the latest Jasmine model, but getting you real important information for those of you that are making buying decisions in the villages. Uh, as you know, I've sold a thousand houses here. I've been here 20 years and uh, I would love if you looked at my website, which is chrisdayhomes.com. You can also read testimonials from over 250 villagers that I've worked with in the past. So thank you so much for watching today and thank you, Tim, for coming. Uh, your time is valuable and I appreciate you. And thank you for watching at home. See you guys.